Hello everyone. Happy Tuesday. It's time for another episode of Tuesday Live at Five. This is Lena Gersa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. And today I'm so excited to share the adorable Sweet Songbirds bundle from the Stampin' Up! 2022-2023 annual catalog. Now this bundle was one that caught my eye right away. I love Stampin' Punch bundles because there's so many things you can do with them. And they're perfect for people who don't have it all, right? You don't have to have a stamp and cut and emboss machine. You don't have all have to have all the fancy tools to do some really fun things with this bundle. So it was one that went right to the top of my list, and I've had so much fun playing with it. There's so, it, just such sweet images. So I've got three projects to share with you today. I've also got some others I'm going to show you um, at the end of the video that I made um, as just as I was playing with this cute bundle. And um, also a reminder um, that my Abigail wrote class registration closes tonight okay so if you have been intending to register but haven't you have until midnight tonight to do that okay so you're gonna want to make sure that you don't forget you don't want to miss out on that class all right let's see who's here I'm gonna pull my video up on my iPad come on there we go this thing is so old and slow kind of like me old and slow there I am. All right, who's watching? We've got Violet and Judy and Laura. Hi, Krista, Tracy. Hi, Mavis. Hope you all are well. Hi, Laurel. Hope you have, are having a good week. Those of us in Southern Ontario had a good dose of rain in the last 24 hours. So much rain. My vegetable garden, I think, grew six inches in the last 24 hours. Uh, we came home from work and I looked out and I swear my lettuce is like ready to harvest already. It's crazy. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a little croaky today. Let's take a bit of water and hopefully that will help. <clears throat> All right. So are you ready? Hi, Helen. How are you? I'm going to flip the camera. Hi, Kathy from Frederick, Maryland. Um, I'm going to flip the camera and uh, we're going to get to it. Okay. Enough chit chatting and yicking and yacking. Okay. Here we go. Let me do my job here. I'll flip. And we'll rotate. Hi from Farmingdale, New Jersey. Welcome, Carol. Thanks for tuning in today. All right. We, as I said, are all about the Sweet Songbirds bundle from the new annual catalog. Now, I have to, I have to share, I came home to three big Stampin' Up! boxes on my front porch. Um, my holiday catalog pre-order arrived today, so I'm so excited. Tonight after dinner, I'm going to crack that baby open and have a good look at all the goodies. So, Super excited about that. Um, just so you know, if you are currently a customer of mine, you will be receiving your catalog. I'm going to be mailing them out this weekend, so you should be getting it uh, in the next couple of weeks. The catalog goes live July 1st. Canada Day is Christmas in Canada. <laughs> and uh, celebration also starts. So lots going on. All right, so let's get to some stamping. The bundle is just, as I said, absolutely adorable. We have some images. These images coordinate with the punch. This one does not, okay? It's a little bit smaller than the bird on the punch, uh, but it's so that you can make, you know, two birds facing each other if you wanted to, but you can absolutely do that, which is the punch, and I'll show you that in a few minutes. Um, but really cute sentiments. This is, a, I had a few people ask me, but this is supposed to be a little wooden sign that you can stamp some of your greetings on. I'll show you some samples. We're actually gonna do that on the first card. Um, and now some cute little music notes. This is my favorite part. I've used these on lots of projects already, um, but really, really fun. And then, of course, we have the builder punch. So I love builder punches because they come with so many different shapes that make it great for doing punch art. If you are someone who likes to do punch art, lots of ideas um, with these fantastic shapes. So that is the bundle. Let's pull in our first project. Now, this one was inspired by my Sunday morning on the deck. Um, I posted a photo on Sunday of Stella and I enjoying the sunshine on the deck on Sunday morning. And as we sat there, there were two mama robins hopping around gathering worms for their babies. It is certainly nesting season here in Southern Ontario. Stella was just too lazy. She just sat there and watched. <laughs> she doesn't chase the birds. She's just like, oh yeah. She watches them and then they fly away. Um, but I was inspired by those little robins to make a nest of baby robins. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So we'll pull out our assorted bits and pieces. I was all about the in colors with this bundle. I just love the new in colors. They're so bright and colorful. And uh, so I kind of went to town with the in colors in this bundle. So we're going to put together our card base first. Our card base is Tahitian Tide. It's four and a quarter by 11 inches, scored in the middle at five and a half. So we'll just go ahead and fold that along our score line. 
And then we have a piece of the fabulous um, 6x6 in color DSP. The patterns this year are awesome. I they're my favorites ever. I love them. These polka dots are great. Love the plaid on the back. And then there are two other patterns as well. So this is cut to four by five and a quarter inches. We're going to go ahead and add a bit of adhesive to this. <clears throat> oh, speaking of Stella, <laughs> she is at my door. I close the door so that she doesn't interrupt and she doesn't appreciate closed doors as most cats don't. <laughs> All right. So there is our foundation. Now we're going to work on our actual focal image in our little scene here. So this is a piece of basic white cardstock. It's three and a quarter by four and a quarter inches. Okay. And I'm going to grab all of, I have a million stamps and inks here. So we're going to start with our branch and some early espresso ink. Hi, Linda. Hi, Sam. Hi, Debbie. All right, so we're going to ink up our branch. We're going to stamp it a couple of times. And one thing I like to do with this is turn it right side and, and upside down because that gives you a more natural look. So we're going to start with our branch that we're going to actually have our nest sitting on. So we'll do that one first. And then I'm going to flip it upside down. And this is the one that our Mama Robin's going to sit on. And then we're going to have one kind of coming up underneath just to fill in some of the empty space at the bottom. Okay. So you can create a whole forest with this one little branch stamp if you were so inclined. Then we're going to add some leaves. So we're actually going to use two different shades of green. I'm using Parakeet Party and Granny Apple Green. These two colors were made for each other. They just work so beautifully together. So we're going to stamp a few of the leaves in the parakeet. I'm not going to be super, super careful um, in terms of trying to line these up or make sure they you know, perfectly attached to the branch because we're kind of going for a little bit of a random look. Okay, so I've done my parakeet ones. Then I'm going to come in with my granny apple green. Oh, this is my favorite bird set. Debbie, I love it. It's so cute. I actually don't often buy the bird sets. I know a lot of people love them. Um, I... I'm, I'm just, I, I like looking at birds. I just don't especially love stamping them. I don't know why that is. <laughs> but uh, this one is just so cute. I love the punch. That's what kind of drew me to it. Okay, so I've kind of done my main leaves. Now I'm going to go ahead and stamp off a couple of times and just add a few more in sort of a lighter shade here just to kind of create some fullness. We want to kind of give the illusion of a tree. Okay, so really simple. Just kind of go crazy with the leaves. All right, so there is our background. Now, I felt like the white was too stark. So we're going to do a little bit of ink blending really, really quick with our Tahitian Tide. So I've got my blending brush here. I'm going to pick up a little bit of ink. Now, when you're blending with these brushes, they are fantastic, but you always want to start off your page and come on, okay? Because if you come straight on, you can get like a splotch and you don't really want a splotch in the middle of your cardstock. So I'm just coming on from the edge, being really quick and adding just some subtle blue, like a beautiful blue sky. It is finally cleared up here and the sun is shining again. There's still quite a few clouds, but the blue sky is peeking through. It's always nice when the sun comes out after a rainy, gloomy day. So we'll just add a few more rounds of this and you could certainly go darker but I just kind of wanted the the look of a bright blue spring sky add just a little bit more over here all right maybe a bit more at the bottom there we go and I love the way the blue just kind of pulls everything together and, and just kind of pulls the whole um, background together. All right, so there we go. We're gonna set that aside and we're going to work on our nest and our baby birds. All right, so I have some scrap uh, crumb cake cardstock here. And, oh, it would be adorable for Easter, Debbie. I think that's a great idea. Um, and I've got some soft suede ink. So I'm gonna ink up my nest and just stamp it on my scrap here. And then I'm just going to take my paper snips and fussy cut it. I mean, this is about as easy as it gets to fussy cut. We don't even have to be really precise because it's a nest, right? They're twigs. It's not meant to be uniform or anything. So we'll just quick rough cut this. 
There we go. So we have our little nest and then I, we're going to put together our little baby birds. So our little baby birds are actually the wing. Okay. So these are just stamped in soft sweet ink and I punched them out using the punch. So the wing is one of the shapes on the punch is this one here. So I've already gone ahead and done that just in the interest of time. And then I've got three little yellow beaks. They are stamped in crushed curry ink and also punched with the punch. So that's this part of the punch. Okay. So to adhere these, the easiest way to do it is literally put a little, come on, put a little dab of glue at the top of each little baby bird body. And then I'm just going to grab my take your pick and just stick them down. Move this up just a bit because I don't want to see the top of the head there. There we go. Speaking of babies, I just heard just before I went live that one of my good friends, who is actually a former student who has become a good friend, um, just had a baby girl, her first cutest little thing ever. She's just adorable. So I am over the moon excited for them. And here we go. Last one. We'll pop that on. So I might just send her this card because it would be perfect for a new mom. All right. So there we go. There's our baby birdies. Now we're just going to attach them to our um, nest. I'm just going to put a little bit of seal here. And really, it's just a matter of sticking these little, little guys on. There we go. How easy was that? Super easy to make a cute little nest of birdies. So that is going to get popped up onto my background as soon as I find my dimensionals. So we'll pop that on here. Hi, Claire. Let's get that stuck down. Okay. So we're going to have that just sitting on our nest. It's going to go off the edge just a little bit to make room for mama bird over here. Okay. Now, speaking of Mama Bird, she is stamped again in soft suede ink and punched using the punch. I have also stamped and punched um, sort of the belly piece. That's this um, piece here. It's stamped in um, sweet sorbet to coordinate with my background and to create a robin. So we're going to add just a little bit of adhesive and stick that down. Don't want to cover up the beak too much there. And then I've got one more little beak here. We're going to adhere that. And again, I'm just going to use my take your pick. I find this blue goo and the easiest for picking up little bits. So we'll stick that one on. Now we need to give our bird some eyes. So I have the stamp for the eyes and some black ink. So we're just going to ink up those little birdie peepers and stamp our eyes. Isn't that so cute? And it's amazing how adding the eyes just makes the whole thing come to life. Love it. And then we're going to add a wing. So this also looks like a baby bird, but in this case, we're going to use it as a wing. And we're going to pop this on right about there. Okay. And then mama bird is going to get popped up on this branch. So we'll add a couple of dimensionals here. Hi, Martine. Welcome. Hi, Sandy. So we'll add Mama Bird here. Isn't that just adorable? I love it. All right, so this is going to go on to the front of our card, again, with some dimensionals. So this is a great time to use up the edges of your dimensional sheets. Um, if you have some that are nearly done, this one is, still has a way to go, so I'll just use individual ones, but I love using up edges when I'm popping up large pieces like this. It makes it really quick. Yeah, I love this bundle, Martine. It's just the cutest. So we're going to center this on our card front here. Not going to have uniform borders, so the sides will be a little bit smaller than the top and bottom just because of the dimensions of, the, of our, our piece. And then, where my I threw out all my crumb cake. I need that because <laughs> we need to stamp our little wooden sign. So I'm going to grab this and my soft suede ink. I'm going to ink up my sign, stamp off once, and then stamp on my um, crumb cake scrap. And then I'm going to bring in my A Little Bird Told Me and some early espresso ink. And we're going to stamp that on our sign. So, so cute. 
And once again, we're gonna fussy cut this. So again, super quick and easy, because it's just straight lines. And they don't even have to be straight, it's supposed to look like a piece of wood, so. If it's anything like me cutting wood, it will probably be pretty crooked. <laughs> All right, so there we go. There's our little sign. Now I wanted to bring in just a little bit of the leaves. So these are just the leaves. Again, I stamped them in the parakeet and the granny apple, and we're just gonna layer them on our sign. Where are my glue dots? There they are. So we'll just add, let's put a glue dot on the back of our sign. We'll go one on each corner. And we're gonna put our two leaves, one at the top and one at the bottom. And then we're gonna add another glue dot. Now you can certainly do this with liquid glue if you don't want the bulk. Uh, the glue dots do add a little bit of thickness to this, but I'm not really too concerned because we're gonna pop it up anyway. So we're gonna do light with dark and dark with light, just like that. So we have our little leaves. And then that is going to get popped up in that top right corner, that empty space there, just begging to be filled with our little sign. So we'll peel off our backings and we'll pop this on right about there. Is that straight? Looks pretty good. All right, and then the last little touch is just an itty bitty soft sorbet baker's twine bow. So we're just gonna tie a cute little bitty bow here. And the nice thing is your bow can start big and then you can make the, the bow smaller as you play with your loops. I always like to keep tightening and pulling the knot as I go just to make sure it stays nice and taut. Trim off our tails and then we're gonna grab, now here's a little trick that I figured out. So sometimes when you have um, a very small knot, like with this, this twine, um, using a whole real, uh, glue booger is too much. So if you use a whole glue dot and roll it, it's a little bit too big. So what I have started doing is cutting my glue dots in half, using that to roll my little glue booger, and then pressing the knot into that. And it's small enough that it, it still holds my bow, but it, you don't get any of the sticky kind of peeking out behind, okay? So don't be afraid to cut your glue dots in half. There you go. Now I'll just quick show you um, what I did on the inside of this one. So this one says, a little bird told me you've got something to celebrate. So I thought this would be a great one to send to a new baby uh, or to a new mom anyway. Um, a mom with triplets would be perfect, but I don't know any of those. I know a few new moms with new babies. So um, I think this card will probably go to one of them. So there we go. Number one done. So cute. Let's set that over there so it's out of the way. And we're gonna bring in number two. So number two is this one. I posted this earlier today. Love the Tahitian Tide. I love my little bluebird and the little flowers. Just so cute and springy. So let's put this one together. We're gonna start with our, oh, I just realized I forgot to cut my Tahitian Tide layer from my background. That will not do. We're gonna grab some Tahitian Tide cardstock right now. That. I even have a piece. I think this is four and an eighth. Let's just double check. Nope, that's too narrow. Let's get a fresh piece. Bring in the old trimmer. And I'm not old, I mean really old. This is the original Stampin' Up trimmer. So let's cut a mat here. So this one needs to be four and one eighth by five and three eighths. There we go. Let's get that out of the way. Now we're good to go. Okay. <laughs> Debbie, <laughs> just takes practice, that's it. All right, so to start, we have a piece of basic white cardstock. It's embossed using the Mary Melody embossing folder. That's one that is near and dear to my heart and will never ever leave my craft room. Um, so it is, as I said, four by five and a quarter inches. And then I have a little strip of Tahitian Tied DSP that is two by four inches. Okay, so this is going to get glued on about three quarters of an inch in from the left side. So we'll just add a little bit of seal and pop this on again, starting straight. So actually, I'm going to move up one just so I can see where my dots or my lines on my grid are. Make sure that's nice and straight. Okay, um, and then I have 
some die cut leaves. Now, how fantastic are these? So these are cut using the new um, Delicate Edges die. So this is another die set that is not in any bundle. It is hidden in the back of the catalog along with all the other dies. And it is fantastic. This leaf die is my favorite from that die set. I've die cut this using um, the ombre in color uh, glimmer paper. So you get that fantastic ombre effect. Um, I put um, adhesive sheets on the back of this. So I'm just gonna peel off my backing. Got a couple little bits to get rid of here. So we'll just get rid of them. Come on. There's one more there. And then that is going to kind of run down my um, DSP piece. Not right in the center, but pretty darn close. Just get rid of that little one there. And then I'm gonna trim off the excess. Now I'm not gonna throw out this um, excess bit. Um, I'm gonna use it later on a project. So there we go. Cute, cute, cute. And looks fantastic with the Tahitian Tide. Love that color combo. It's gonna bug me that that little bit is still in there, so I gotta get rid of it. There we go. Okay, so that is our background. Now that's going to get layered on that Tahitian Tide piece that we just cut that was four and one eighth by five and three eighths inches. So again, we'll add a little bit of seal to our embossed piece and then adhere that right about there. Okay, and then that is going to get glued to a thick basic white card base that is five and a half by eight and a half inches, scored in the middle at four and a quarter. Okay, so we'll fold that in half along our score line. And then we're gonna go ahead and adhere our background piece. Stick that on. And then we're good to go to work on our little birdie. Okay. Okay. So we're going to be building our sort of little focal image here on a die cut stitched rectangle. Now I cut some of this off. Um, I think this is the third largest stitched rectangle and I cut this down to three and a half inches. It's almost square, but not quite. Okay. This is a little bit more. This is three and a half. This is like three and three eighths maybe. Um, it's not quite square. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna bring back my branch. Now I do need to clean this because I'm going to use a lighter shade of ink. So we'll get the early espresso off there and we're gonna bring in crumb cake instead. So we are going to, it is the cutest stamp set, Claire. Honestly, I love it. It's just so sweet. All right, so we're gonna add our branch for our nest to sit on. And then while we have this out, we're also going to stamp our nest. So I've got some more scrap crumb cake. I'm going to ink this. This time I'm stamping crumb cake on crumb cake. Okay, so it's a little bit of tone on tone, a little bit lighter. I thought the lighter shade would work better with the color scheme on this card. So once again, I'm going to cut out my nest. There we go. And we'll get rid of our scrap. Hi Joyce, glad you made it. <laughs> I'm sure the dog was not willing to wait until I was done. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna bring back my leaves and my parakeet party. And we're gonna stamp the leaves a few times. So we'll start by kind of trying to sort of maybe line them up, okay? And then I'm going to add a couple sort of here and there. They're not gonna necessarily line up with anything, but we just wanna add a little bit of fullness again. And then once again, I'm going to add a few stamped off to add fullness to my branch. Okay, easy peasy. All right, so we have our nest. Now I have my little bluebird here that I've already punched from Tahitian Tide cardstock. I'm going to bring in a sponge dauber and my Tahitian Tide ink pad, and we're just gonna add a little bit of shading around the edges. Now this dauber has seen better days. <laughs> I need to get a new one. It's falling apart. It's shedding little bits of sponge. Um, so once it starts to do that, it is time. Can you see all the little shredded bits there? That's how you know it's time to replace your dauber. <laughs> this one is well past its prime. I have used it quite a bit. Um, I made actually quite a few of these little bluebirds and inked them all. And I also inked um, a bunch of 
bottles for my bingo for one of the projects for my um, launch bingo. So there is my little birdie. I'm also going to ink the wing. So again, just really quickly trying not to shred this dauber any more than it already is. I think that one's going to go directly in the garbage. <laughs> we're going to get a new one. All right. So there we go. Okay. Now we're going to stamp some eyes on our little birdie. And oh, did I punch it? I didn't punch a beak. Or maybe I did and I lost it. Doesn't matter. We got more cardstock and we're going to punch ourselves a little bitty beak. So I have my punch and literally you need like the tiniest corner of your cardstock to punch the beak. So there it is. And just like before, we are going to add um, our facial features. But first, just to make sure that we actually see them all when we go to put this in the nest, um, we're going to, well, adhere our wing, but then we're gonna add our beak and our eyes after we attach it to the nest, just to make sure that we get them in the right spot. So let's add our wing. I'm not worrying about a belly on this guy because you're not gonna see his belly or her belly, I guess, because she's wearing a flower. But during Pride, it could be he or she. <laughs> doesn't really matter. Um, so we're going to go ahead and add our nest. So again, I'll put a little bit of adhesive here and we're just going to kind of stick our bird to the nest. Now that it's in place, now we can go ahead and add our beak and stamp our eyes. So for this one, we're going to put the beak over just a little bit. So there we go. There's our little beak. And then we're going to bring in the eyes and our black ink again and add our eyes. Where do I want my eyes to go here? I think we're going to do, oh, I put my beak over too far. Oh, well, there we go. Looking a little, it's got this head turned a little bit more. Okay, there we go. Cute, cute, cute. Now we're going to add a couple of little leaves to our nest, just again, to, for, to add some fullness and some color. So we will add a glue dot to the back of these leaves and we're going to adhere it just sort of in the corner of the nest there and then these guys are going to go down here in the bottom so we'll add this kind of down here like that okay and then that's going to get popped up there we are going to stamp some music notes but once we have our bird on because we don't want to we want to make sure our notes kind of makes sense where we put them and it always helps to have the bird there as a reference. So we'll get rid of our backings here and we're going to pop this little birdie on. So, so cute. And then we're going to stamp our music notes, assuming I, I did remember to get them out. <laughs> so here is again, black ink for my music notes. You certainly could do them in another color if you were so inclined. So we'll stamp our notes. Okay, and then we're going to add a little bitty fussy cut flower. This is also stamped from the stamp set. Um, we're going to add just a little flower, a little bit more glue there. And again, I'm just going to use my take your pick to pop that into place. So cute. Okay, so then this is going to get adhered to our card base. Now I'm going to, my cut edge here, I'm going to line up flush with the edge of my basic white piece. Okay, so we're going to add a couple of dimensionals to the back of this one. And we'll get rid of our backings. Hi, Deb, how are you? Yes, I love the colors in this one too, Martine. The little pop of pink with the Tahitian Tide and the parakeet are just fabulous. So cute. All right, so there we go. Now I wanted to add more flowers and I love these loose flower flourishes, these little embellishments from the annual catalog. And they just happen to come in the polished pink. So I just added a few sort of here and there on my project, kind of like these are little blossoms in the tree. Uh, what do we do? We'll add a couple more. Where's another little one? So the easiest way to work with these is to kind of get them placed where you want them. Okay. And then you just take your, take your pick. So I usually take that in my left hand. I'm right handed, but I'm going to take that in my left hand. I'm going to use my blue goo end. I think I need a refill of my blue goo end on this thing. I'm going to pick up my flower. I'm going to put a little bit of liquid glue down and then I'm going to plunk my flower back in place. Okay. This is the easiest way to kind of get them positioned. 
um, and know exactly where you want them. Okay, and it takes no time to pop them down with a little bit of liquid glue. You could also use glue dots with these. I find the smaller ones are a little bit too small for the glue dots, um, unless you, again, cut your glue dot in half. So it's a little bit smaller. You may find that you're seeing your glue dot behind the small ones. So I just like to use a little bit of liquid glue because it is super strong and it will hold these little fellas. Now it does take some time to set up, so I don't wanna move that too much just yet. We're gonna set that aside and we're gonna stamp our sentiment. So I have a little bit of scrap, white cardstock here, and I'm going to bring in my A Little Note of Thanks, and we are gonna ink it up. Oh, that's a little bit gloopy there. I hit a juicy spot on my black ink pad. Let's try that again. There, that's better. And then we're gonna take our, set, our scissors and just give that a little trim. Um, Fussy cut sentiments are really big right now, and this one's a really easy one to cut out. So because it's all straight lines, you don't have to do anything super fancy with it. So we're just gonna trim this. My fingers are not functioning very well today. There we go, let's clean up that corner because that's not very nice. There we go, that's better. And then one, and two, there we go. Super quick and easy. Now this is gonna go on right about here. Now keep in mind that we pop this up, right? So we're only gonna put um, a mini dimensional on one end. So this end that is not going to overlap. And then on the other end, I'm just gonna add a little bit of seal so that when it overlaps the popped up layer, it lies flat. So we're going to just pop that on right about there. So, so cute. Make sure that's straight. There we go. Isn't that sweet? Love it, love it, love it, love it. All right, now on the inside of this, I didn't stamp a sentiment. I did add, I had just a piece of scrap of the DSP left, so I thought, why not? We'll add that. Um, it carries the color inside and gives me less space to write, <laughs> which is always a good thing. So there we go. There is number two. And number three is this cute fun fold. Um, so this one again, I went all bright colors. I am just so loving the in colors. So I kind of combined the color scheme from the first two cards. So we've got Tahitian Tide, Parakeet Party, and Sweet Sorbet. For this one, I actually used my um, little left facing bird. So we're going to stamp and I'll show you how to put together this fun fold. I've, I've done this fun fold several times. I love it. It's so easy. Um, it looks impressive, but it's really, really easy. And you gotta love impressive ease, right? Okay, so to start, I'm gonna show you how to put together your card base. Pull out the pieces that we're going to need. All right, so to start, I have just a piece of thick white, thick basic white cardstock that is four and a quarter by 11 inches, okay? Then I've scored it at four, eight and nine and a half inches. So four, eight and nine and a half. Okay. All right. So I'm going to start with this top fold, the four inch fold, and I'm going to fold that upwards to create a mountain fold. Okay. By mountain, I mean, when you stand it up, it looks like a mountain. Okay. The next eight inch score line, I'm going to fold upwards to make a valley. Okay. So I have a mountain and I have a valley. All right. And then this last one, I'm going to make a mountain again. Okay, so that is going to form this foundation piece here. Okay, now we're going to decorate this a little bit. Um, I have a piece of that fabulous Tahitian Tide cardstock. It is four by three and three quarters inches, so that is going to get glued to our background there. So we'll add a little bit of glue. You can use whatever you like here. I just like the liquid glue when I'm doing fun folds because I like to be able to adjust and make sure things all line up just so. Okay, so there is our background panel. Now our front panel here, um, we have the choice of using the polka dots or the plaid. I decided to use the plaid this time. Okay, so that's going to get glued. This is one by four inches. So that's gonna get glued to that front panel. So we'll just add that. All right about there. Now this is where I'm gonna to try to match up 
the edges of my DSP. So I'm kind of laying this down so that they all line up nice and even. Okay, so that is my foundation. Super, super easy. Now my sort of piece that pops out here, this is cut, this is seven by two and it is scored at five and a half. Okay. Seven by, is it seven or seven and a half? Now that I'm going to double check that measurement and I will post the correct measurement in the description. Okay, I think this might be seven and a half. Five and a half. Yeah, I think it is seven and a half. Seven, um, two by seven and a half, but I'll double check that. Okay. Um, it is scored at five and a half inches. That much I know for sure. So we are going to fold that in half. Actually, you know what? I've got a ruler right here. <laughs> yes, it is seven and a half. So two by seven and a half. Okay, so there we go. And that piece is going to get glued on here to form our pop up. But first, we are going to add some colorful, in color, um, cardstock strips. So all I have done, I'll explain it, because I actually did cut or stamped once for both of these. Um, I just had some two inch wide by, I don't know, three or four inch scraps of Sweet Sorbet Parakeet Party and Tahitian Tide. And I took my little music note stamp and stamped randomly all over each one in the ink of the same shade. So I stamped Sweet Sorbet on Sweet Sorbet, Parakeet on Parakeet, and Tahitian Tide on Tahitian Tide. And then I cut them into half inch strips. All right, so we're going to kind of build our background here, our sort of standout focal point um, using these little strips. And it's super easy, like literally, it's just a matter of gluing these little guys down. Um, I again like to use my liquid glue for this um, just because it allows me to make sure I'm getting them all straight and lined up. So we're just going to glue these guys on. Doesn't really matter. I start, you'll notice I started with sweet sorbet instead of Tahitian Tide. That's because I didn't have enough Tahitian Tide strips left <laughs> to be able to do the whole thing. So I started with a different color because I actually use one less of the Tahitian Tide. So it's just a matter of gluing these little guys on. Just takes a bit of patience, but it's worth the effort because it's such a fun background. So we'll just add these little fellas all the way up. I love this um, color blocking look. It really is a fun way to do um, a really interesting background that is super simple, right? Like all it is is layering uh, different colors of cardstock here. Now I think my Tahitian Tide is a little bit crooked on here, but that's okay. We are going to hide that part anyway. It is a little bit crooked. So I'm going to compensate and straighten that one out. And then we'll hide it anyway because our bird's going to cover it. So parakeet. And another Tahitian Tide. The only thing with this is you want to make sure you get your music notes all going the right way. Trust me, the music teacher in me requires it. Okay, don't do your music notes upside down. Because they're not written the same way, right side up and upside down. Okay? Don't make me come over there. All right, last one. Add this little guy on top. Okay, and then to clean this up, can you see how the edge is a little bit of white showing there? So to clean this up, I'm just gonna put this into my little guillotine trimmer here, and I'm gonna line this up flush at the two inch mark, and just clean that edge up. There we go. Oh, that's not so clean. Let's just tidy that. This thing does not like to cut through two layers of cardstock. <laughs> there we go, done. All right, so now to adhere this, we are going to line the bottom part up flush with the bottom edge of our foundation piece here. It's going to go, I don't know, about half, three quarters of an inch in from the right side. So we're going to add a little bit of seal to that bottom edge. And again, you just kind of want to make sure this is straight. Okay, it'll be really obvious if it's not. So use your grid paper to your advantage and get those pieces on straight. Okay, so that one's on. Then we're going to flip the whole thing over, and this is going to get glued here. So we're just going to add a strip of seal here, fold this over, and we're done. Isn't that cute? Such an easy background. All right, now for our focal image, 
I have a die cut circle. This is cut using the stylus shapes dies. And we're gonna stamp our branch first. Let me get all of these other little bits out. So we'll start with our crumb cake branch. And ink that up. Okay. And then we're gonna stamp our leaves. So once again, I'm using the parakeet. And where'd I put my leaf stamp? There it is. So we're gonna add a few little leaves here and there. Oops, okay. So my parakeet party is super juicy. So I'm gonna take the back of a spoon and I'm gonna massage it a little bit. Do you see how much lighter it is in the middle there now? And that is going to press some of the ink down so that when I go to stamp this, I get a nice crisp image instead of one that looks a little gloopy and bubbly. Okay, so if you find your new ink pads and it's not uncommon to get a new ink pad and have it be extra juicy, just do that little trick. Give it a little massage, okay? And you'll see that the center is lighter. By doing that, it presses the ink down and then you get a much nicer image, okay? All right, that's your little hot tip for today. <laughs> okay, we're gonna add a couple of little flowers using Tahitian Tide. So we'll ink up our little bitty flower. Now this one is pretty juicy too. You know what, I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. So we'll just give this spoon a quick clean. And then we're gonna do the same thing. So I'm just gonna give it a quick little massage here. And again, you're gonna see how much lighter it is in the middle. It's not that I've taken any ink out of the pad. All I have done is press it down into it. Okay, so it's not all at the top. And then when we go to stamp our little flowers, we're gonna get much better images. So we'll just add a couple of these little guys here and there. So cute, love this little flower stamp. There we go. All right, now we're gonna stamp our little birds. We're gonna start with the feet. I'm stamping the feet in Crush Curry ink. Now there are two sets of feet in the stamp set. There's one that are just standing. They kind of go with this one because they're facing to the right. And then these guys, it looks kind of like he's walking. This is for the guy that's facing to the left. So we're using walking feet. And you just wanna make sure that your feet are actually planted on the branch, right? You don't want levitating feet. <laughs> Even though birds can fly, they don't levitate very well. So we wanna make sure that our bird is connected to the branch. And then we're gonna add a little bit of sweet sorbet. And we're gonna stamp our bird body. So I just wanna make sure that the body actually overlaps the legs. Okay, ooh, that didn't stamp so well. Should have used my stamp and Pierce mat. That's okay, I might blend that out later. Okay, now we need to stamp a little bitty wing. So while I actually have the sweet sorbet out, we're gonna add a wing. And this one, we're gonna stamp just on this little bit of scrap and punch it out. And we also, well, we'll do the, we'll do the beak in a minute. So here we go, we're gonna line this bad boy up and punch that out. There we go. There's our wing. And then for our beak, once again, we're going to add or grab the crushed curry. And you'll recall, we literally need the teeniest little corner to stamp. And we'll punch that one out. Again, you just kind of center it in the punch and pop it out. And we're gonna stick our beak on again with a little bit of liquid glue. And we'll use our, take your pick, and just pop that into place. The stamped bird shows you exactly where to, I just tried to put my Tombow lid on my take your pick. <laughs> wow, it's been a long week and it's only Tuesday. Okay, let's add some eyes to our little birdie. There he is. And while we have the black ink out, we'll add some music notes as well. There we go. And then we're gonna pop up our wing with a mini dimensional. There we go. There he is, so cute. Okay, so then we're gonna layer this guy because layers are fun. So I have a um, just a plain circle cut using the layering circle dies from Sweet Sorbet cardstock. 
So we'll just add a little bit of glue here and we're gonna pop this on. What I love is you get a very narrow little border all the way around when you layer them using the Stylus Shapes dies. And then we're gonna layer it onto a Parakeet Party Scallop Circle. Also cut using the layering circle dies. And it's just the cutest. I love the layers. So this is going to go onto our card base here. Okay, right about there. I'm gonna add some dimensionals. Now you wanna make sure when you're adding your dimensionals that they kinda of go down the middle of your circle because if you put them all over, what's gonna happen? Well, you're gonna stick your card flat, okay? So we don't wanna do that. We wanna make sure our pop-up still pops up. So we're just gonna put our dimensionals kinda of down the middle of our circle and stick that on. Okay, and then the last little touch is to stamp our sentiment. I have this little teeny banner, also cut using the Stylus Shapes dies. And somewhere, I have a welcome stamp. There it is. We are going to add our stamped sentiments on our little banner. And i got to move this way down low. I hope you guys can still see. But I need to see what I'm stamping. <laughs> there we go. And then I cut. Did I cut? Maybe I did not. Okay, we're going to stamp and cut some leaves really quickly. Um, again, from the parakeet. Where's my leaf stamp? There it is. So it is super easy to fussy cut these guys. Um, so we'll stamp. And we're just going to grab our snips. And cut a couple of, whoops, I just cut part of that leaf off, but it doesn't matter. It's a leaf. <laughs> so we'll just... Trim these really quickly. And then same thing on this one. A lot of you that are worried about fussy cutting worry about perfection. And you need to remember that it doesn't need to be perfect. It's handmade, right? So don't feel like you can't fussy cut because you feel like it's not good enough. First of all, it gets better with practice like anything else. And secondly, nobody's going to be looking that closely at your fussy cutting. And if they are, they don't deserve another handmade card. <laughs> that's that. Okay. So that's go ahead and fussy cut. Don't be scared. All right. So we're going to add our three leaves to this corner and let another glue dot down here. Fold that in and add these guys here. I'm just going to clean up that leaf a little bit. There we go. And then that is going to get stuck on here. Now, really important also, because remember, this is going to pop out. So we're not going to put any adhesive under this end. We're going to put all of our adhesive under the end that's actually going to layer onto the card, onto the circle. So we're going to add a little bit of seal here. And that is going to get layered just like that. So that when it stands up, we still have our little pop out action. Okay, last little touch. Let's clean up this mess. Last little touch is another bitty bow. So this is the Tahitian Tide Baker's Twine. So the Baker Twine comes in a five pack. You get one spool of each um, color, which is awesome. So you don't have to buy a whole bunch of different packs. You get them all together. So we'll just make our cute bow. And then once again, I'm gonna use half of a glue dot to stick this guy on. So we'll just trim that off. Grab our little glue booger here. And this is going to go just in this bottom corner of my banner. I'll stick that on. And there we go. Isn't it cute? Now on the inside of this one, I added a so happy you're here and stamped my little bird again nestled in the, the leaves and flowers. So let me pull all of the projects from today in again. And then I'm going to show you a couple more ideas with this sweet bundle. So there are our three from today. Now let me show you a couple more ideas because I did have a lot of fun with this. So here's one, a quickie, a really quickie that I did using the um, T Boutique DSP. So similar color scheme to this one, um, but this doesn't use cardstock. This uses um, the T Boutique DSP. So there's that cute little sign hanging from the tree. And then here's another one I did, same kind of idea. Okay, I thought this would be a cute one for someone who's just announced a pregnancy because she's sitting on the nest. Uh, so you've got something to celebrate. I thought that would be a really cute one. 
This is one I did during my launch party. I love the color scheme on this one. I love my little punch birdie. And then this one is a slim line um, that features all five in colors. So I just wanted to highlight the fact that you can do birds facing both direction with just the punch. Um, makes it it's super easy. Just flip the punch shape over. Okay. And then on the inside, added some more music notes. So there you go. There are some cute ideas using the Sweet Songbirds bundle. Okay. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed these projects and I will see you again next week for another episode of Tuesday Live at 5. Bye for now.